Yes people and welcome back to AJ Cars and welcome back to another video on the E92 M3 and the question I'm asking is does this car deserve to be classed as one of the great M3s ever built? Well in this video I'm going to share with you my opinions on the car and we'll see if you agree with me. But first, before we get into the video, make sure you do subscribe to the channel. And if you do like the content on this car, make sure to stick about because I'm going to be pumping way more content out with this car as much as I can in my ownership. So stay tuned for that. And if you do enjoy this video, hit that like button and let's get straight back into the video. Now, first of all, this is an E92 M3 and of course a 2010 model. They came out from 07 to 30. And in hindsight, every BMW that comes out should be better than the last. But is that really the case with the E90, the E92 and the E93? And we're going to talk through a few points of why it is and why it isn't. Now the E90, the E92 and E93, so that's the saloon, the coupe and the convertible, they all share the same engine, that beautiful 4 litre naturally aspirated V8. And yes, they all sound incredible. <laughs> However, that is the only M3 that BMW ever brought out with such a large engine. Now, can you really call this the greatest M3 ever just due to having a massive engine in there? I don't think you can, because it needs to have a few more things on the car in order to call this one of the greats, and we're gonna discuss that now. So yes, it does have that four litre V8, and they sound incredible, and it really feels like you're in a muscle car every time you drive it just from the noise. But it isn't just the noise that makes this car feel like that race car feel. It's the engine as well and the power output. These have 414 brake horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque from the factory and you can tell it's there and due to it being naturally aspirated that power is instant and it's very linear all the way up to 8200 rpm and on public roads that is more than enough and i think 414 brake horsepower on a car like this it's worthy of that m3 badge now due to this being a four liter v8 they need a lot of air in order to help that engine breathe and of course you have the double vented bonnet to help that of course one of them isn't actually any use that is blocked off however you do have the bonnet vent on the right hand side and that basically just feeds cold air back into the engine to help it with that power output you also have the vents underneath in the front bumper to give it that extra bit of air flowing and of course the big kidney grills not as big as the new ones but the perfect size kidney grill as we all think and they are carbon fiber, which is also a little bonus. It does nothing for the engine, but it looks nice. I'll wait for him. Now, as I said before, you can't just rely on putting a big engine in an M3 and expecting it to be one of the greats. You have to have some more things involved. And that brings me on to handling and suspension. Now, I haven't actually driven an E46 M3, the predecessor to the E90, E92, E93. However, I can use my car knowledge in general and compare it to the newer M3s and tell you whether the handling on this car is actually up to scratch compared to the newer ones and the older ones. Now, I don't think it's quite fair to compare the E92 to the G80, the new M3, because that is way ahead of its time with the suspension and technology in that car compared to something like this. However, the F80, the younger brother to this, the one just before the G80 is again, a level ahead of this i know it's a completely new car and it has all new technology but the f80 is way better with suspension and handling this car does feel slightly direct you can change the dampening on it it does have edc's electronic damper control 
which is a nice touch for these cars. You can change it from a hard setting to a soft setting. So if you're daily driving it like me, I just have it on the softest setting. But if you're tracking the car or you are driving it hard, you can set it to the hardest dampen it, which is a nice touch. And it does make the car feel a bit more direct going through the corners. However, if you don't have it on the hardest setting, you do have it on the softest, it can feel very floaty. So when you're going around the corner, the car almost feels like it's tilting. So you don't feel very stable in the car, but overall it isn't the worst. And I haven't driven an E46 M3, so I can't really compare it to that, but I have heard the E46 is the greatest M3 ever built. And a lot of people do say it. However, there is a few faults with the E46 M3 that was changed and helped out with this car. Now overall, I think the handling is mediocre at best. I don't think it's too crazy. I don't think it's really, really dialed in. I think it's just about okay. But again, you can't just rely on handling suspension as well. It needs a good gearbox. Now these have a seven speed DCT dual clutch transmission. Unlike the 46 where it had an SMG box, which according to quite a few people out there are very sluggish and slow. Now these, a lot of people actually change this gearbox into the Mark IV Supra when they do high power because these gearboxes are so good. And they are very good, seven speed, gear changes are almost instant and especially this car because it has a GTS gearbox map. So if you are getting a DCT version of this car, I would definitely recommend getting that gearbox map so you can downshift as much as you want comfortably and reliably and they are instant. Now, moving on from the gearbox, we aren't going to talk about anything mechanical on the car now. We're going to go purely cosmetic on the exterior and on the interior. Now, exterior-wise, it is massively different to the E46 M3. The F80 is kind of similar, but you can tell there's been that drastic change in the car. BMW, for example, Volkswagen. I know the Volkswagen company did the same thing. We'll take my Mark IV Golf, for example. From the Mark 4, 3, 2, 1. They all look very similar, the same headlights, box shape, and then they went on to the Mark 5 GTI where it was a completely new model. They reshaped it, they changed the headlights, and that was what BMW did with the E90, E92, E93. They changed it drastically from that box shape E46 with the bubble headlights to the sleek, newer style, as we would say now, which does resemble the F80 and now the G80. They've kind of changed that whole aura about the car and i think they did really well so cosmetic wise they do have of course new bumpers and ideally a new shape as well the bonnet with the big hump for that v8 so it really does look like a proper muscle car m3 the front bumper did have an lci version i'm not entirely sure what year it came out but it wasn't too drastic it was more just widening the front grills and that was about it the headlights didn't really change and the actual overall body of the car never actually changed the bonnet is still the same the doors are still the same and the rear bumper is still the same with that beautiful quad tip exhaust which i think looks really really good now overall i think they did really well with the design of the e92 again it was a new production car completely different style of car they brought out and i think they did really well and it has helped progress these newer cars into a proper nice looking m3 now the interior on the e92s i think are way above the e46 m3 it has this nice infotainment system which does have navigation it does have dab radio which the e46 m3 didn't have they have stepped up we've got the cup holders here everything just seems a lot more new we have the alcantara here which again is an aftermarket thing but it does really help we did put the alcantara in the 46 r1 it wasn't an m3 and it did help it a little bit but the whole interior in general was very dated this one looks very new you have the m buttons there you have the digital dash in the middle and it just looks very very nice in here and i think they did a very nice job so overall does the e92 m3 live up to its name and does it deserve that m3 badge of one of the greats and i think it does I know there's a lot of fault to this car and there is a lot of things they had updated on the F80 and the G80 but for the year this car came out I think they did very well and of course that big V8 really did help the situation. So I think if you did want to buy an E92 M3 and you're watching this video thinking should I buy one, are they any good? I would say yes, go and buy one because they have done very well with this car. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video, stay tuned for more videos like this and I'll see you guys in the next one. Yeah. <laughs>